Hello, my name is Evan Bingham. I'm a professor at Brigham Young University, uh, myself together with Clifton Farnsworth and James Smith, who were also teachers at uh, Brigham Young University, have uh, printed a paper, and this is the presentation for the ASC 2020 conference. Um, the title is Comparison of Construction Scheduling Perspectives from General Contractors and Subcontractors, an Analysis of Current Tools and Practices. And what we have done in this research is uh, we I sent out a survey to um, contractors, mainly in the West, and uh, trying to find out their perspectives on scheduling, who's creating a schedule, um, who's updating the schedule. Uh, also, finding out you know who who might be who's causing schedule delays or um, or problems in the schedule. Um, and so, what we did is uh, sent out a survey to commercial contractors. Uh, there were somewhere around sixty-two. Um, surveys that came back. We had specific parameters about this specific um, research and that we wanted it to be uh, within a certain uh, contractors that uh, were not small, so they were in a certain range uh, as far as the amount of money that they, or the amount of work that they did in a year. So from the, from the surveys that were completed, we selected those that fit our criteria. There's 23 general con contractors and 17 subcontractors. And the survey was asking uh, questions like who's creating the schedule, um, what kind of software are they using to create the schedule, and then who's coordinating the schedule, who updates the schedule, how does that happen? And then if their schedule overruns, um, what, what is the source of those overruns? So after collecting the surveys and doing the analysis, uh, these are kind of the solution, they're the, the findings that, that uh, resulted. So when we asked about who's creating the schedule, um, you can see here in this graph that um, uh, in blue and in orange. In blue is general contractors, and orange is the subcontractors, and so that's the total number. So the majority of the schedule um, are being created by project managers. Um, they're also, you know, second to that would be like a, a superintendent or a company scheduler. A project executives are sometimes, but, but not um, as much involved in the, making the schedule. And the owner it was also sometimes involved, but um, uh, not primarily the the main creator of the schedule. So we see the project manager is mainly the creator of the schedule, creator of the schedule in the commercial, for these commercial contractors. Uh, and then we moved on to uh, what kind of software are they using? So uh, we had some software that we, you know, selected for them. These are these are common software used in the industry. Uh, P6, Microsoft Project is the second one there. SureTrack, um, Excel, Newstar, Build-A-Trend, QuickBooks. Uh, these were other, one, other ones that weren't selected necessarily. Uh, I mean, they weren't, in the survey, but they were, you know, select other, and these were other ones that came up. Um, the new star, Builder Trend, QuickBooks, and others. Uh, some still not using a software. So you can see out of the, um, out of all of the general contractors and subcontractors, there was a good number still not using software to create a schedule, meaning they were uh, using some kind of non-computer-based tools to track the schedule. Um, and then once again in blue, general contractors, you can see that the, for the most part, the majority of them are using P6. Uh, some are using Microsoft Project. Uh, and for the subcontractors, Microsoft Project is the primary tool that they're using. And, uh, and then in general, the, the, the tool that was used the most was Microsoft Project. Um, as you can see here, that uh, some of the GCs are also using Microsoft Project. Uh, SureTrack is still around. It's not supported software anymore, but um, it still can be used. And so there were a few that uh, the general contractors that had, were still using SureTrack. Uh, Excel is not necessarily a construction software or a scheduling software, but it is. Uh, it could be used uh, as such. It's not a, a CPM software, but it still is being used in the industry to communicate the schedule. And then you can see some of the other um, software that uh, is being used in the industry. Um, I think an update for you know more current and 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 uh, larger national trends would show other uh, programs like Phoenix or Asta Power Projects. Uh, gaining some popularity among these groups. Uh, that's my um, that's my perspective as as we're moving forward and as you know these numbers are um, a few years uh, old. Uh, we might find I, I believe we find that uh, those other software are being using more used more and more. Uh, this is an an interesting and kind of like the main ideas of, of what we're looking at. Um, trying to find out how often the schedule is updated. Um, how often is it discussed with subcontractors? You know, what, what kind of communication happens between the general contractor and the subcontractor? 
And you can see, for example, the question, how often do you, does, do you as the general contractor discuss the project schedule with subcontractors? Uh, it's happening on about a weekly basis. 65% of the general contractors are talking to the GCs on a weekly best basis. And the, the subcontractors are agreeing with that. They, they say that the general contractors discuss the schedule with them uh, at a, on a weekly basis. And, uh, and then sometimes it's on a daily basis. You can see the next percentage, 15 and 13% on a daily basis. Um, and then, uh, you know, subcontractors, 7% of them um, saying it just happened once, right? And, and, and doesn't, doesn't happen again. Other questions as general contractor, how often is the project schedule updated? So the GC is updating the schedule um, uh, mostly on a weekly basis and then uh, some of them on a monthly basis. Same for the subcontractors, Hi, they're, they're shooting for, or they accomplish the 73% of them are updating their schedule on a weekly basis. Um, and then next, uh, would be that they're either just doing it once or it's happening on a monthly basis. Um, so we can see some of the questions to some common, you know, some of the uh, research questions that we were looking for here. Uh, this part of our paper is interesting in the fact that we were trying to get perspectives from the general contractors and the subcontractors as to what their um, and how the schedule's going for them. How are they, what's their perception on, on how well they're doing in keeping up the schedule and how well the GCs are doing, you know, GCs and subs. So if, if we read through the question, for example, the first one down there at the bottom is on the bottom left, as a subcontractor, what percent of the time do you finish your scope of work within the allotted duration? So a subcontractor's 87%, they're saying 87%, 87% of the time, they are completing their schedule within the um, allotted time. And then if you look, skip two over, from your perspective as a GC, what percent of the time are schedule runs, I'm sorry, as the next one, as a subcontractor, what percent of the time do you finish the scope of work on the originally scheduled dates? And they're saying that that happens 62% of the time, right? And then it's on the other side, it's saying from the, general, from the perspective of a general contractor, what percent of the time are schedule overruns caused by the general contractor? So the general contractor is saying that 18% of the time they are causing the schedule overruns or it's their fault, I guess. And then on the opposite of that, from the perspective of a subcontractor, what percent of the time are scheduled overruns caused by the general contractor? Well, of course, uh, and well, we could say, of course, it, it, it seems like that might be the, the theme of this paper, this part of the paper, is that from the perspective of a subcontractor, it's a general contractor that's causing the delays. And from the perspective of the general contractor, it's a subcontractor that's causing the delays. Uh, so 62% of uh, the delays are caused by GCs from the perspective of a subcontractor. From your perspective as a GC, what percent of the time our schedule runs, overruns, I should say, uh, caused by the subcontractors. They're saying that it's 51% of the time um, that it's caused by subcontractors. What percent of the time our schedule overruns caused by you as a subcontractor? They're saying, well, it's 18% of the time is when it, it, uh, uh, an introspective subcontractor is saying 18% of the time the, the overruns are caused by them. And then lastly, what percent of the time do your projects finish on project schedule deadline? That's 70% of the time. So. Not a big difference on that, it, it, you know, as far as 70%, and then you look at those first questions saying that, yeah, 87% and 62%. So they agree that the, you know, the rate of uh, completion um, is about the same. Uh, what they might disagree in between the subcontractors and the general contractors is who is to blame for the delays. And, um, and so that's an interesting uh, thing to view there. Uh, so in conclusion, it was, it was good to, to get an idea from these general contractors and subcontractors what uh, their perspectives are on scheduling, what their approach is, you know, who's updating the schedule, what software they're using. Um, this was uh, for multiple reasons. As a teacher in, in construction management and teaching a scheduling class, I wanted to know, am I preparing my students for the right type of uh, software? Are we teaching the right software? Because what are they gonna be using in the industry? And then also for uh, educational purposes on you know, what the practices are in the industry and kind of the perceptions that, that they might have among sub subcontractors and general contractors or different practices maybe of who's creating the schedule and how the schedule is being updated and how often. Um, and uh, anyway, this was a good, good research for us. It, it could continue to get larger. We could find more contractors, uh, but uh, for our purposes, it, it answers the questions that we wanted to answer and, um, and led to more questions that we wanted to, to ask. And so our future research has gone into the additional questions that we're looking into and, and wanted to ask about, you know, schedule updating and schedule practices and best practices for cre creation of the schedule and the communication of the schedule and updating the schedule and all that. So thank you for your time. Once again, this is Evan Bingham, um, a teacher at Brigham Young University, and we're grateful to be able to present their, our research on um, these uh, scheduling or these perspectives on scheduling uh, for commercial contractors.
and we hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.